add an outline around it, and then just increase the stroke oh, wow. on the outline. And then you it's just like kind of get these nice letters, right? And then from there, you can just start taking this shape and maybe cutting it up to make more shades and shadows. And like there, you know, I cut out like a little part of the Z to make a nice little shadow on that. And just kind of like think about, you know, how light would hit something and just kind of make it more animated. It makes it, you know, just kind of cooler. And that's kind of my process, really. I just do that about, you know, 500 times. And then, you, <laughs> and then repeat, you have repeat, a... Refine, repeat, refine. Exactly. Just repeat, refine, repeat, <laughs> refine until you have what you're looking for. And then you get something cool that you can use and then save it out as, as a PNG, bring it into Unity, use it on your title screens, use it use it everywhere. You can, I mean, if you want t-shirts done, anything, it's just great. I mean, so Illustrator, highly, highly recommend if you're going to create assets for Unity. Some people are different. Some people say no Photoshop all the way, or they might be using another image editing program. Yeah. I just like the crispness of, of Illustrator. I think it gives you a really nice animated quality. Um, and you have all these great vector pieces that you can really kind of build a library of and arrange them on a page to build sprite sheets and different things that you can use over and over hmm. and over again. So then you'll just export those out, take those images, yeah, I just, drag and drop those images in Unity and absolutely. And, in scene and Yeah, when we, when we get into the, the 2D character, when I actually kind of build this on the fly right here, I'll just show you how I do that. You know, we'll do some different chunks and pieces of them, save it as a sprite sheet, and then you can use those pieces, bring them into Unity, kind of get it all skeletoned up and have it move around and do different things. <laughs> skeletoned so, up. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> skeletoned up. I guess that's, <laughs> my, that's my term, yeah. Um, so I think next we're going to move on to the... Uh, 2D character creation. 2D character creation. Well, let's show, the, let's show the actual title screen, right? So, you know, now that I finished this logo, there's a couple different things you're going to need on the title screen. So, you know, we have this great logo. It looks great, but we need some type of splash graphic, I think, to go along with it because you really want to reinforce the idea of these pumpkin slayers and maybe the world that they live in. Yeah. Um, so with that, you know, I, I created this little... Uh, let me go here. I'm always losing my files. But when I go here, let's see. We have... No, that's not it. The home screen. Oh, right here. So we created this home screen. And once you're done... Oh. There you go. So once you're done with the logo, nice. a lot of times, yeah, I'll mark out like a, a, an HD uh, size, like uh, 16 by 9 or, or just 1920 by 1080 version of like a home screen, right? A blank canvas. I start bringing in my, my elements. So I bring in my logo from Illustrator. Um, and then I'll start you know, creating new assets in Illustrator probably, or even drawing them in Photoshop. And so this was kind of our just really, really loose mock-up of what we were trying to do for the game. But we wanted to reinforce a couple things. We wanted to reinforce the world that this, this game takes place in, which is this kind of you know, funky cemetery, right? <laughs> Halloween. Like an animated kind of, yeah, animated kind of quirky cemetery. Uh, and then we wanted uh, to, to reinforce the enemies, like what are you fighting in this game? Um, so with that, you know, we thought it was a good, using these little silhouettes of these these pumpkins, I thought was really, really cool. And that's something too that, you know, if you're doing a game on that, on that home screen, you always like to do something on a home screen that kind of has a consistent kind of animated Rep repetition, so it just it's not just static when it's sitting there, it's doing something. So, not for this, but down the road, you know, you could take those pumpkins and have each one kind of like constantly laughing here and there, move each and one would move and glow laugh a little and, bit. Yeah, and, and add little sounds to them and stuff. So, you know, you, you kind of get this, this you really get a sense of, the, of the, the style and the world and what you're trying to create. So, you know, in a nutshell, that's what we did for the home, the home screen right here. You know, it's basic, but we kind of have a couple elements in here that kind of reinforce the theme and what we're trying to do. We chose a font that's kind of a little more of the, this kind of retro horror aspect of what we we're trying to do for the play game and, and just kind of threw this together. So very, very simple. But, you know, if you're going to start an indie game, you got to start somewhere. And that's always with you know, the title screen. And with the title screen, you gotta have these different elements and lay it That's out. That's the cool. first thing to hook a person once they've opened it up. Yeah, they, they wanna see something cool. And you know, you gotta have a really cool logo that hooks Definitely. them right away. You gotta have um, just all these elements ready. And then from there, you can start making your mobile game. So Part of the challenge is getting them into your game. I yeah. will talk about that later. And then once they've got into your game, you gotta hook, <laughs> yeah. hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, next up, I think we're going to get into 2D character creation. 2D right. character creation, indeed, which is another thing I can't wait to see because that's another big mystery. Like I said, I can do a little mean stick figure, <laughs> but uh, as far as creating it past that, yeah. that's, where I, that's where I defer to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we got some comments from the people on the boards when we uh, were first getting this thing going, and I think we posed the question of, you know, what kind of character did we want? And uh, I think the, the winning candidate was a... Triceratops ninja barbarian character. Um, so from there, we uh, I did this quick little doodle just as the comments were coming in. 
Um, I kind of collectively chose a couple di people's different opinions uh, to, to create this. But from there, you can see it's a super rough sketch. Like I never am, am extremely fine tuned in my sketches. I really just kind of go off the cuff and create something. I think I did this in a matter of two minutes. Um, just really just go fast to make what you want. Take pieces, cut them up, make them bigger, make them smaller. Just kind of get the, the roughed out shape and the silhouette of the character you're trying to make. And then from there, you got a really great guideline that you do just like in Illustrator, you have this template layer to start refining on. So I always start in, in Photoshop. So right now, I did my sketch, um, and I definitely recommend using a drawing tablet of some kind. If you have a Surface Pro 3, or if you have a, a Cintiq, or um, you know an Intuos tablet, uh, these are great for on the go. Um, definitely use a drawing tablet of some time. It's just gonna make your life way easier when you do this. Take us through, so we've got a slide on a great kind of overview of some of the steps. Talk about kind of uh, some of the things that's required as per what you would do so, each step of the way. So when you start, you know, you, you wanna start with your initial sketch of the character, right? And this is kind of what we have here in Photoshop. Uh, you can do it in Photoshop, like I did with this, with my Intuos tablet, or you can do pen and paper, you know, on the fly, get it ready. And then from there, you wanna create your template layer, right? Which is just your base layer. Don't think of it, don't get overcomplicated with the term template. <laughs> All it is is just a base layer. So imagine like the, the tracing layer that yeah. you're gonna use, your main kind of just rough sketch that's on below, and then you're gonna basically build up on top of that, right? So from there, you know, we've got our, here's our rough sketch. We're gonna make this our template layer. Um, I always start, you know, it's just on white right there, nothing's separated, nothing's crazy. You know, we just have our sketch right there. Well, I always just make a new, a new layer on top of that. And um, I'm not working in a really high resolution. Another thing to note, you don't, when you're creating characters that you're gonna eventually be tracing in Illustrator and other programs, you don't need to go like 300 DPI or 600 DPI and, and go crazy with the sketches. Just keep them low res, you know, you can, it, they're just reference layers, that's all it is. So that's gonna help with a couple of things. If, you, if you've got a system that doesn't have, you know, the really hardcore guts to, to really push the graphics and stuff with your, your high resolution images, you can just, you know, you can do it on a, on a low res device. So you can do it on, you know, tablets with pens or whatever. You can do it in uh, uh, the Surface models are great. I love the Surface Pro 3 has, has awesome drawing tools in there. And you just wanna get that sketch done and then bring it in from there, you bring it into Photoshop and just with any resolution, you just wanna get the general shapes and the general things done and then bring it in Illustrator and actually start refining them and just like we did in the logo, yeah. right? Tracing each element and making them usable elements, usable vector elements that we can then kind of piece out and kind of create this almost like a marionette, right? Of all these different pieces that we're eventually gonna bring Control in. Control separately. And yeah, they all have anchor points that are gonna move and then you can even do variations of those. Like if we're doing the eyes separately, you can do eyes that blink, eyes that are scared. You can do mouths that are talking, mouths that aren't talking, all kinds of different pieces. And you, it depends on the character you're trying to do. But when you do that, it's gonna give you a ton of flexibility, especially with Unity's 2D tools. They got really, really great animation tools. And I think it's using Mechanum behind the scenes to do it. Yeah. But the blending's awesome. You can actually separate the layers of blending. So the top of your character could be doing one thing, like attacking while the bottom's running. All kinds of stuff. Very so, cool. yeah, but back to the, the character creation. I know people want to see exactly yeah, the I wanna, process. Of I want to be doing. selfish here, and, and, and <laughs> I watched you kind of in the room over there sketch some of this out. And uh, can you just show us even, even roughly? Roughly? Roughly, like how you would even start that. Like I see this kind of quasi-refined thing that, that you're working on here, and I'm like, wow, geez, where do you even start to draw? <laughs> like that looks pretty good to me. Way better than my stick figures. <laughs> so, so with that, you know, honestly, it's really as basic as just grabbing the pen tool or the paintbrush tool in, in Photoshop, the airbrush tool, and just kind of just, just going nuts. And you just want to get your shapes down and just kind of, you don't have to go crazy with it. You know, you just want to kind of define like the shape and maybe even just do some general shapes to kind of get like what you want the character, like his proportions to be and just kind of different elements, right? So you, you find know. you always use kind of a lot of lines just to kind yeah, of Yeah, just it me, I, I just go rough. And for me, that's just my loose, I, I, I always do that when I'm sketching. I like to keep it loose because I can, I'm gonna get rid of this anyways, right? Yeah. This is just, for me, like I'm thinking, okay, like what, what are these sizes gonna be? Like what, how big is the head gonna be? What are the arms gonna look like? Different things like that. And from there, you can then start just even going over that and like refining like these different shapes, right? 
So I know like a Triceratops, he's got these horns and these different things. So this is just really, really basic stuff. I'm just going in and just kind of doodling, like nothing crazy. Like I'm not using my best artistic ability. <laughs> but I get... I mean, this is already better than I think I can do. <laughs> like when you draw an outline and you immediately go for the Triceratops and you kind of do the horns on them like that. Yeah. Uh, have you practiced drawing dinosaurs in the past? Like will you take time as part of your kind of training routine, so to say, and just say, you know what, I want to I try to draw a dinosaur today. You know, it, it depends. I just tend to, I mean, I've always loved dinosaurs ever since I was a kid, so I, I was, you know, and I, I know what a Triceratops looks like. Yeah. I know what different things look like, and if you have that vision in your head, just start just start going nuts and, and sketching it down. And just kind of I, refine it as the I think, goes on. Yeah, and, and even as a teacher, you know, I tell my students when you're, when you're working on it, you know, you really just want to be loose and just get that shape of the character, get the silhouette going, get the general shapes going, and then you just start going in and working on top of that and building it up. You know, you don't have to be super, super refined. I think for this guy, you know, I, I we, we talked about <laughs> barbarian. So at first I wanted to have this like kind of big barbarian <laughs> triceratops with like an ax, but then people were like, oh no, make him a ninja, make him a cyborg, like do all this stuff. So I was like, okay, let's- Make him a Ken doll but, triceratops driving a car. Yeah, exactly. So I was like tweaking different ideas. different elements, right? So I had, it started with the head, because I figured, okay, it's triceratops, let's at least get that point home. And then we do that. And then from there, we start kind of blocking out the shape. So I wanted these big kind of arms, that you, you know, you got going on here. I wanted maybe like this kind of more cyborg-y chest piece with like some kind of diode in the center. And the same with the arms right here, you know, representative of maybe some other video game characters or other cyborg characters people have seen. And just little elements. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Um, and uh, from there, you just start building your character out. So yeah, I think it's a pretty good reference layer to work with. And I'm gonna get rid of those sketches I saw, even though that, that was actually looking kind of cool on the side right there. But uh, <laughs> I'm actually use that head, which is great. You know, this is why you sketch, right? So you kind of have these elements that you can use. Actually, it's pretty close. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty yeah. close. <laughs> so, nice. you know, yeah, I mean, this is just my process. You know, this is my workflow. I, I'm very, very loose on the things I do, um, but when it comes to refining them, that's when you really take the time and make it look great, right? So, you know, we've got this really, really base kind of template layer that we want to use. And um, from there, we're going to start like refining this character, right? And even, you don't have to go to the point where it's so refined in Photoshop that you're just like, this is perfect, I'm gonna use it as is. Some people do that, some people just love to paint in Photoshop, and you know, more power to them. Like if you can paint, if you can bump this thing up to a high resolution of 300 or 600 DPI, and then you could even do this in layers in Photoshop and do more of a painterly, if you're going for a painterly look, let's say the game you're making has this kind of hand-drawn quality and everything's kind of painted in the game, you can use Photoshop to do that and, and add custom brushes and make really nice painted characters and do the exact same thing you're doing in Illustrator. I'd recommend bumping up the resolution if you're gonna use those pieces anywhere else, like marketing materials or whatever, which I think you always gotta be cognizant of if you're an artist. You wanna make sure that the, the elements you're producing you can always reuse because you don't wanna use them once and just be done with it, yeah, right? Yeah. It's always important to, to, to kind of get the most leverage out of the things you create. So, you know, getting back to what we're doing here, I think that you know, for the terms of what I'm doing, I'm gonna show you like a really crisp kind of animated quality. Okay. Just my workflow for doing that. Sure. Um, but again, like I said, you could use Photoshop to do this if you bumped up the resolution and kind of did the pieces on different layers and whatever. Um, so, you know, we've got some good pieces here to start with. Um, we'll just make this our template layer. And what I do is I always just make a, a layer on top of everything. We'll, we'll name them for the sake of people following along. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you're going to name them now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to kind of imagine that as just stacking layers. That's going to be my template. I usually fill it with white, and then um, you, I just reduce the opacity on it just to kind of give me like a, ah. you know, that's just, for me, helps me just create like a nice guide. Um, so anything, my sketches or anything, I just stuff down below it, and then I keep this nice, like tracing paper, yeah, right? You sure. just take a piece of paper, stick it over the top, reduce the transparency so you can kind of see this translucent image to work from, right? So um, same thing, you know, we'll create a new layer and then we just go through in here and this is just refining these shapes. And I might not go through and refine everything, maybe just some things that I know that I, I wanna refine that are important to me. Um, but you know, like the arms, you know, I, I, maybe I'm a little tighter in my sketching and just kind of go through and get these different elements that I think, you know. And the popping elements, you want those to show out more. And yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm going in here and just kind of wanna, you know, define like some of these cooler elements and visible elements that I, I want. And I'm not, again, I'm not being super, super tight with it, but I'm being, you know, a little bit better than just crazy rough sketches, right? Um, and then, you know, I want, I want people to see these different elements. And uh, I actually, you know, from day to day, I actually work with a, a Cintiq most of the time. So I'm actually 
doing this on the screen, so excuse me if it's not perfect. <laughs> so, <laughs> but so with that, you're drawing. Like, I'm drawing you're actually on the screen, so yeah. So this, today I'm actually using Intuos, which is fine. I, for years I used Intuos, and it's kind of a little hard to go back and do it again, but it's actually kind of fun. Um, so uh, You were cruising last night. I was watching. Yeah, it was <laughs> cruising. I was, I was, you were getting that thing done. It was awesome. Um, so you see here, I'm just kind of going through and picking the, the pieces I like and just kind of refining them and making it look how I want it to look. And, you know, it looks good for an arm. And then maybe I'll make another layer and call that our arm. All right. You don't need to separate. This is just for reference for me. You don't need to separate these, but I'm just going to do it for the sake of the demo. Just to be a little bit more organized. In the a little more organized. We have some different pieces.